11 years ago, U.S. Ambassador to Libya, Christopher Stevens, U.S. Foreign Service Information Management Officer Sean Smith, and CIA contractors and former Navy SEALs Tyrone Woods and Glenn Doherty all killed during a terror attack on the U.S. compound in Benghazi. Mark Geis was there that day. He's a former Benghazi Annex security team member, retired U.S. Marine, and the creator of the Shadow Warriors Project, and he joins us now. Mark, global picture here, 30,000-foot view. Are we doing enough to protect our own in these hot spots around the globe? You know, I think we need to have a stronger presence, um, or at least a stronger response and more immediate when our troops do get attacked. Um, you know, they've been getting attacked over the last week and a half throughout the region, and we have just recently, uh, as of yesterday, had a counteroffensive against the IRG, which is prevalent throughout the, uh, the Middle East. So you think that strike should have happened sooner? Yeah, I think it needs to be immediate because they need to understand that, you know, you, what, what is going on in Israel is going on in Israel. You're not going to attack our U.S. troops. They need to be protected. Our diplomatic facilities need to be protected because if you let it go on, you're going to see another Benghazi if you're not careful because all it does is allow the IRG or our, uh, our opponents, our enemies, to be emboldened by our lack of a swift and diligent response. Mark, there have been three administrations since Benghazi. Where do you lay the blame? Um. You know, I lay the blame at the top, um, you know, especially with the Obama administration. And the thing that most our politicians, our leaders need to understand is they need to pay attention and listen to the people on the ground. If they're asking for help, give them help. They know better than anybody else of what really is going on. Unfortunately, what we have is our politicians that just are looking at the bigger view, of course, and looking at the... Uh, the political ramifications from it. Well, when you've got Americans under fire and Americans that are dying or under attack, then you need to be listening to them to respond how they need help there on the ground because they know best. Um, and you can't get that over some UAV feed or something like that. Mark, 900 troops reportedly are being deployed or have already been deployed to the Middle East. Tactically speaking, what is the impact of those 900 troops? You know, a lot of it depends on the on the group that it is. Um, a lot of them, I'm assuming, are probably there to reinforce um, and provide neo operations for any of our embassies and consulates that are around the Middle East, because they're the ones that are going to be at the forefront of things. At every embassy, you've got you know military personnel, you've got State Department personnel, you've got private military contractors, um, all working at those facilities. And they are going to be targets if uh, we're not careful. What's happening behind the scenes right now that we're not hearing about with, I'm going to call them contractors, special forces, individuals like yourselves with regard to getting these hostages out? Is there something happening behind the scenes or, or do we not have any uh, brave men and women there on the ground in Israel as we speak? You know, there were several organizations um, that jumped in right away. We were one of them. Um, fortunately for us, we didn't have to deploy anybody downrange. We already had people that um, we are in contact with that live in Israel that assisted us both with information um, and giving the people that we helped the ability to make a decision on how to best get out of Israel. And uh, that's how we worked that. But I know uh, Tim Kennedy and uh, Save Our um, Allies has been in country. I think he's back out now. I talked with him yesterday. But... They're all ready to do whatever needs to be done. If the government is overwhelmed and can't take care of all of our American citizens, um, as private entities, we're more than happy to help out as, as we can and get Americans out of danger. We'd be remiss if we didn't mention the Shadow Warriors project that you created in honors the memory of the fall and which also always needs to be remembered in this brave country with our brave men and women that we have. Mark Geis, thank you so much for your time this morning.